thanks very much for joining me. Uh, for those of you who don't know who I am, my name is Jackie M and I am a former uh, restauranter, Malaysian restauranter who specializes in Malaysian hawker food essentially but over the last couple of months I've been playing around with my brand new Thermomix TM6 and I have actually just come back from Malaysia just a week ago. Just wanted to show you guys uh, the, this cutter and how it works and uh, what I use it for. Like I said I literally only just came back a few days ago so all this is quite new to me and I'm figuring things out as I go along as well. And that's the whole point with my whole new Thermomix spin. Uh, for those of you who've been following me for a while, you will know that I've been using a Thermomix a TM5, actually the older version back here, for many years uh, during my live broadcast casts, just incidentally as I cook and, and whatever. But uh, this year, 2023, is the year of the TM6 with yours truly, Jackie M. Okay, so my... Um, my aim uh, uh, over the next uh, year is to show you guys the possibilities with a Thermomix, okay? Um, mostly the TM6, and I'm going to actually do a separate session to cover the differences between the TM5 and the TM6, but today we are going to talk about the cutter, okay? So what is the cutter? And I realize now that I have one more piece of the cutter that I need to grab. Just give me a second. Uh, Paul, can you help me here? <laughs> okay, sorry about this, but uh, this is what the cutter looks like, and it's quite clever how it's designed. Uh, for those of you who don't know, yeah, the spindle thing. Uh, for those of you who don't know, the Thermomix uh, cutter is a uh, well, the Thermomix is actually a German uh, appliance, okay? But the cutter only like is literally just like brand new and straight from the uh, company. And what it is, is that it's this thing here that will work for both the TM5 and the TM6, okay? So if you do have a TM5, don't stress too much. You can actually get a hold of a cutter and use it with your appliance, okay? TM31, I don't think it works with that. I'm sorry to say. Okay, but this is my TM6 and uh, for all intents and purposes, it looks very, very similar to my TM5 back here, but it does have a whole lot of... Uh, other functionalities that you uh, that I wasn't aware of until I saw this in action uh, a, a few weeks ago, really. So I'm very, very new to this whole thing as well. So uh, what have I used this cutter for? Uh, first of all, how does it work? Okay, so this is the cutter, and like I said, it's quite clever. It's German, <laughs> um, and. As German as a <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so with the cutter, if you haven't seen it, it comes with this bowl which sits inside your Thermomix, okay? So anything that you slice or grate is going to end up in this bowl, okay? It also comes with this spindle which sits inside your, um, inside the, the, the Thermomix thinger here, like that, okay? And this goes over it, and then what it comes with is this thing here and the way you differentiate the there's actually two sides to this and you can use both sides so i'm still trying to wrap my head around like uh which side to use for what and all that okay so essentially the cutter can do uh four different configurations okay so you see uh on this side the spindle is like a dark gray and on this side is a light kind of gray okay so um when you use it with the dark gray thing up like this, okay? You use it for cutting, okay, for slicing, okay? So you can slice it in thin mode or in thick mode, okay? And the way you figure out which mode to do it is that the way the machine figures out whether to slice your vegetables thinly or thick um, is dependent on the, um, you know, whether you spin the, um, you know, your Thermomix, you see these little buttons here, okay? Whether you have it um, forward or reverse, okay? Reverse is thin and forward is thick slices, okay? And then you've got, uh, and then, okay, sorry, when you flip it over like this, it grates, okay? And again, it's the same thing, you can grate it in like a thick, like thick chunky grates or it can uh, grate into thin slivers, okay? So I've seen people use it to make, uh, you know, Chinese New Year just wrapped up, but I've seen people during Chinese New Year use it to make like, you know, the Chinese Yi Sang salad, which is like the grated, fine, finely grated vegetable and all that sort of stuff, okay? So if you've got any further questions about the TM5, 
Kara just messaged me. I actually created a WhatsApp group, which unfortunately I, I'll get Paul to post the link. But also um, there's that link, jackiem.com.au slash tm6 takes you to my sign up page for those of you who want all my recipes, okay? So um, that's what we are going to do, get you into my thing up and then uh, you should get a welcome email that sends you a link to my WhatsApp community who, uh, and the people in there are the first who will hear about any special events, uh, special tips and techniques and, and that sort of stuff with me and my Thermomix journey, okay? And then of course you've got the link here Okay, so like I said, just bear with me because I'm very, very new to all this. And then you've got this thing here, okay? Uh, and because I'm very, very new, <laughs> um, I've really mostly used, like, I, I am assuming, I haven't read through the manual completely. I'm assuming this one is for, like, thin vegetables or whatever, and this will be for the thicker wedges and stuff like that, okay? So what have I used this for? Uh, I have used my Thermomix for uh, the cutter for two things so far, okay? As I come across more things I can use it for, I will share it with you guys, okay? And again, my focus is Malaysian cooking, Malaysian and more broadly Southeast Asian cooking. So, uh, you know, try and stay within that space, okay? Don't ask me anything about like Italian food or whatever. I might struggle to give you any answers about those. Okay, so two things we're going to make in this session. One of them is, uh, you know those, um, uh, if you eat wonton noodles in Malaysia, right? You know that pickled green chili thing? Okay, so I made that yesterday. Just let me quickly pop off camera to bring it over and show you what it looks like, okay? So like I said, we are all still playing around with the cutter. So we're all very new to all this, okay? So what I did was I, I played around with it yesterday. And also, yeah, before I go on any further, yeah, uh, my broadcasts are made possible through my Lenovo devices and I'm a Lenovo uh, insider ambassador sort of thing. So uh, thank, uh, I just want to give a shout out to Lenovo for all, for, you know, otherwise you won't be watching me on camera that much. Um, okay. So what I made yesterday were these green pickled chilies, okay? And you'll see there are two jars. I made two little jars. We're going to make some more in this session. Uh, the two jars, uh, because I was experimenting with the different th thicknesses of the cutter, okay? So they actually, both of them actually turned out quite well, okay? So two different varieties of um, the pickles which we're going to make. And the other thing we're going to make is achar, okay? Um, it, it, obviously, as with lots of different like dishes in Malaysia, there are lots and lots of different recipes for achar. This is my recipe for achar, which is basically the same as what I used to use for my restaurant. Okay, sorry about this. Um, yeah, so yeah, for my restaurant. Okay, so it's a little bit healthier <laughs> than the version I make for my restaurant because I use more of the fresh stuff here, okay? But nonetheless, okay, so this is what we're going to be covering today the uh, pickled chilies and the achar. Achar, which for those who don't know, is kind of like a, a, a mixed vegetable pickle with peanuts and, 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 and all that sort of stuff and it's spicy and whatnot, okay? So let's do, uh, first of all, to make the pickles, what we want to do, I'm going to actually um, grate the, uh, okay, let me, I have to think through this a little bit because, okay, I want to slice the chilies, okay? So I'm using it uh, the dark grey side up, okay? Correct me if I'm wrong, okay? And I've got green chilies here. Okay, so these are the green chilies we're using, okay? Let's just hold this on camera. And obviously, if you were making this at home, you'd be hand slicing it sort of stuff, especially if you're doing large quantities, or for those of you who may not have, like, you know, if you've got, like, you know, if, if you've done as much, like, manual handling of food over the years, your hands get really, really tired, okay? But uh, also, I just want to give you a heads up that these things are a little bit wrinkled, okay? Because I made the mistake of buying them and spacing them off for a few days so that they're sitting on my counter and just drying out. Um, so hopefully they cut okay. So what we want to do, uh, I'm going to actually just cut off the uh, stems, okay? And like I said, you know, if you were making this at home, you would be hand slicing this, and, you know, and this is uh, the cutter, will just save you a bunch of time, okay? And also being able to do all of it in a thermomix just, again, just, you know, makes things a lot easier. 
and you decide it, I don't bother, okay? So this goes over the top, okay? So I think I've got it the right way, okay? Again, it's got a thick setting and a thin setting, okay? And you know what? What I haven't tried with Thermomix is actually the, um, you know, the great thing about the TM6, okay, while we're on the topic is that like, you know, like I said, this thing will work on the TM6 and the TM5, but with the TM5, you have to do it in manual mode, okay? So you need to um, um, do it a little bit different, but it'll still work. But anyway, with the TM6, I haven't actually used it. I actually used it on the TM5 in manual mode, right? Uh, but with the TM6, because this is Wi-Fi connected, right? Uh, the software automatically updates, okay? So when the cutter came out, they actually added a couple of functionalities. So if you've got a TM6 at home, you will notice that it's got two new functionalities, grading and slicing. Again, I haven't used this, okay. Slicing with the Thermomix cutter, you can slice vegetables, fruits, hard cheeses into thick, thick and thin strips, okay. I'm going to show this message again, okay. So that's what it's telling me to prevent overloads. Check filling of the bar, a bucket after cutting approximately this amount. Okay, so here, if you can see this clearly, it's got thick and thi uh, thin and thick mode, okay? So let's go for the thin mode for this, okay? Uh, like I said, if you've got a TM5, it will be a little bit different. You have to actually remember to spin the, you know, to turn your whatever sort of thing, okay? But anyway, we're using TM6, so you don't have to worry about it. Okay. And what you want to do is just say, now these are pretty thin, okay? So I'm going to feed them through the, the, the more narrow funnel, okay? So uh, I want the thin mode, so, okay, thin mode over here. Here we go. This is going to be exciting. See what happens, okay? Like a kid at Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Here you go. And like I said, <coughs> if you've got any questions, just post them in the comments. Uh, obviously, while I'm busy cooking and Paul is eating his lunch, <laughs> I've got nobody managing the comments at the moment, but no, uh, at some point we will go back to them and answer your questions, okay? But better still, if you're in my oh, WhatsApp group, I got it. If you're in Better still, if you're in my WhatsApp group, you can pop the questions there and I'll see them right away. Because this is being shared out like over like half a dozen different Facebook groups and pages and whatnot. It's a little bit hard for me to keep track of like what everyone's saying, okay? So this is what it looks like. We're going to toss this into here, okay? So there you go. So beautifully, beautifully, evenly sliced up for you, okay? And we are going to use my um, scraper. I'm going to scraping this in. And after this, I might just get Paul to wash this up for me for my next trick. <laughs> okay, um, here we go. So this is what we got. And what else? Okay, here, would you mind just cleaning this up for me? Okay, what we want to do is we want to actually just uh, run some salt through this. Okay, just let me put on some glass. And like I said, you know, you can do this in thick mode as well, all right? I, I did like two batches, one thick, one thin yesterday, and they both turned out fine. So it's kind of like a personal preference thing. Um, salt. Okay, I'm gonna just gonna toss some salt through this, okay? The recipe will be sent out to you guys. Okay, um, just bring it over for me. Okay, Paul's just opened up the lid and there are bits of uh, leftovers here okay so you can put them through again or you can I, i'm just going to save them for my re next recipe actually okay so these are like the the bits that put them in a bowl yeah so i'm going to get paul to put them in a bowl okay so i'm just tossing some salt through this okay and mixing it through for this amount i'm just going to put about a bit more salt okay Right, so we're going to set this aside, and what we're going to do now, and I'm going to borrow my TM5 for this next step because um, 
it looks fine, <laughs> okay? What I'm going to do with my TM5 is I'm going to chuck in some vinegar, okay? So, oh, you know what? You can, obviously with the Thermomix, both TM5 and TM6, they both um, have scales, all right? So for this amount, I want, say, uh, by the way, uh, you will know if you follow me long enough, I'm a big proponent of agak, agak, which in Malay means guesstimating, okay? So I don't actually, frankly, measure a lot of things. What you want, essentially, depending on the amount of chili you're using, you want, essentially, uh, a two to one ratio of uh, vinegar and water, okay? So for this amount, I want maybe about or half a cup of vinegar, put a cup of water, okay, let's go with that. So now with the Thermomix, if you're not familiar with it, everything is weight in grams, okay, so you'll convert half a cup of water will be 125 mils, 125 grams, okay, so you're going to weigh 125 grams. Hmm, maybe it needs a bit more. Okay, I want to put a little bit more, okay, I want the two thirds of a cup. Okay, and then I'm going to put uh, half that amount in water in there. Okay, that takes it to about a cup fully, okay? And then what we're going to do, we're going to add some salt in there, okay? And let me just double check. This recipe actually is on my website, jackiem.com.au, but I haven't made it in a while, apart from making it yesterday, but then I kind of spaced it up. Okay. Um, yeah, that's it. I just want some, some sugar. And it's going in there. Let's have a look. Okay. So I want a couple of tablespoons of sugar in here. You don't want this to actually taste sweet. The sugar is really just there. Just, just cut through some of the sweetness here a little bit. Okay. I want... Cut through the sourness, okay? Okay, so we've got that. What we're going to do, we're just going to boil this, okay? So let's cover this. And here you go. So to boil it, you know, again, very aga aga. How long will it take to boil a cup of water? I'm going to put it for on for a couple of minutes and set it to 100 degrees and just get it stirring okay so by the time it boils the sugar should dissolve so that's going away um, now in the meantime this we're going to chuck them into a uh, jars okay let's have a look okay jar and I might, I might need a second one Okay, second jar, here you go. And don't forget to say hello, let me know where you're watching from, all right, guys? Um, now, I am a Thermomix consultant now, so if you want to, if you want me to come to your place, if you're based in Sydney, or if you're in other parts of uh, Sydney, Australia, or other parts of Australia, or in New Zealand, uh, I can actually do a demo for you virtually, okay? So if you are a Thermomix owner and you want to score yourself one of these cutters, okay? They're worth two, like nearly 200 bucks or something like that, I haven't checked. Uh, all you have to do is find two other people to invite to your in real life IRL or virtual demo that I will run and do all the work for you. And if someone buys it, you get a cutter for free, but only till the end of uh, February, okay? If, yeah, if I do a demo and people don't buy it, for hosting it, you still get a discount on it anyway, okay? So anyway, back to this, we're going to chuck these into the uh, into these jars, okay? So here we go. Let me just see if I can get it so you can see it, okay? So I'm just gonna actually put some gloves on again. And just squeeze out some of the water, okay? kind of feel like I need a third jar. <laughs> it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. I think it should be okay. Okay, here we go. 
two jars and don't forget to stick around because the next recipe is going to be on acha. Okay, so I'm going to show you a little bit of a workaround with the acha that I've kind of like uh, figured it out. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, we, we need a, a kind of a, a slight hack with the acha, okay, compared to how you are used to seeing or making acha, okay. So, two jars here, okay, those that have been salted. And let's have a look. This is already heated up to 100 degrees. I'm just going to stop this and have a look, make sure the sugar is fully dissolved. Okay, so here we go. What we're going to do is just pour this over there. So it did turn out to be too much. <laughs> okay, so here you go. And I'm just going to cover this. Let it sit for at least an hour before you use it. There you go. So next time you have like some noodles, all right? It is very big with the, you know, with Malaysians and in particular with uh, some Chinese Malaysian noodle dishes, okay? Uh, this is perfect. And um, all it did, all it took was like just a couple of minutes doing this in the Thermomix, all right? So it cuts it for you and all that sort of stuff as well. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we are going to make a char, okay? Now, uh, remember the, the cutter, okay? Like I said, we, we're gonna have to change our like perception of a char a little bit. The cutter slices and it shreds, okay? Now, when we make a char, typically in Malaysia, okay, just let me go back home here. Okay, when we make a char, right, we need ingredients like Carrots, okay, cabbage, cucumber, and snake beans, okay, right, so snake beans are easy to cut, okay, now I, I, I'm speaking as someone who used to make buckets and buckets of achar for my business, and the achar was really actually only used to serve my nasi lemak with, okay? So I used to make a nasi lemak, which is a Malaysian like a coconut rice dish with sambal and uh, uh, fried anchovies, which you can actually also make in your Thermomix TM6, right? Uh, but I used to, you know, to bling it up a little bit by serving it with uh, achar, these pickles, okay? But they are a pain to make, okay? First of all, the cucumber, like I said, the snake beans are easy, so we're not even going to use the cutter for the snake beans, okay? The snake beans, you just basically, so let me see if I can get this on camera a little bit, okay, here you go. Um, okay, so the snake beans, all you do is just chop, 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 okay? So we're going to do that, just cut off the top bits, and then we just cut them into strips like this, okay? I'm cutting them a little bit shorter because, like I said, we're going to have to hack our achar recipe to match what the Thermomix does, at, you know, using the cutting function, okay? So basically, snake beans, you just cut them like this, okay? Uh, the carrots were a pain to cut because they're hard. And then, you know, if you are familiar with achar, you usually cut it into strips, okay? So you would actually um, cut it into, like... Um, what do you call it? Matchstick size Julian. Julian thing I was okay. And the cucumber, what you would do is you would cut it in half first, okay? Like this, okay. This is a little bit longer than two because you can see the seeds aren't great. Um, can I get a metal spoon from you please? Uh, and then what I have to do is core out the middle and then I have to cut it up, okay? So the cutting of achar ingredients would take me forever, okay? So we're going to, like I said, we're going to attempt to do it using the Thermomix today. Is this one okay? It's a little pointy. Yeah. Okay. okay. So what we want to do, okay, so usually what you do is you would actually just core it, okay? You still have to do that with the Thermomix, it's not going to core it for you. Um, but the hard part then would be that we would then have to cut it up and cut it into like thin strips like this, okay? So this time, we're still going to core it, but the coring is easy, okay? Half it and then core it. Um, can I? Okay, 
So we're going to do that for a couple of these cucumbers. Okay. Here you go. So just core it. And by the way, for future reference, I know like setting up with uh, Facebook Lives, say Facebook keeps changing their MO with how that you go live, all the steps and all the requirements. That's why I was running late a couple of minutes today because they do it um, without prior warning. But if ever you're in doubt, so I mean, you know, which means sometimes even though I share the event and share the links and whatever, if they somehow you can't find me when you know I'm supposed to be live, your best option is to go to my website and the link is jackiefcomau slash live. Mm -hmm. Okay? So we will actually embed the live video in there. It's there right now. Yeah, it's there right now. Okay? <laughs> uh, the only problem with that, obviously, is you can't actually comment directly in there. Okay? But you can at least watch it and it will be up until the next time I go live. So if you, if you miss the uh, live live, you can watch the replay. Um, at jackiem.com.au slash live okay okay so I've got a couple of carrots and we're going to do a couple more cucumber okay again we're gonna core this right whoops okay so that's what you end up with You go. Okay. But like I said, the coring bit is easy, okay? And cucumber is actually my favorite achar ingredient. I don't know about you. Mm -hmm. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes. cucumber and cabbage, I mean, the snake beans I could probably live without. <laughs> snake beans can be expensive sometimes too here in Australia. Um, but yeah, carrots, oh, yeah, I, I mean, the carrots add color. Um, but I, oh. you know. I was going to say, as the, the only audience member who can respond to you, I'm answering for all of us, yes, cucumbers are the best. Isn't that right, everyone? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here you go, coring it, okay? So we've got all these ingredients here. What we're going to do now is uh, we are going to grate some of them. We're grating all of them. I'm trying to think through. No, we're, we're slicing the... Cabbage, we're slicing the cabbage. Okay, the cabbage, now I just got to point out the you do need these things to be small enough to be able to feed, feed uh, you know, through that feeder tube that you saw earlier, okay? That's why the cabbage will need to be cut into wedges like this. But having said that, let me just reassemble my thing up. Okay. So again, don't forget, you want this in there, the bowl goes in, okay, and okay, let me think this through a little bit, grating, slicing, okay, so we're going to slice the cabbage first, okay, we're going to slice the cabbage in uh, thick slices, okay, but, you know, keep in mind, I know that you're going to say, oh, but acha, like the cabbage are cut into one inch uh, strips and whatever. So it's up to you. If you want to hand cut the cabbage, you can do that as well, right? But if you're doing big volume like I often do for my business, uh, then this will be a great help, okay? So we're going to put this on and there is my feeder thing up. Yeah. Okay, here you go. So we're going to feed in the cabbage, okay? Let me just actually... So the cabbage I bought was like this, okay? So I'm gonna actually cut a couple more wedges and feed it through in a sec. So again, here we're going to, point this, okay? Slicing, okay? So slicing, I want thick cuts, okay? Thick, okay. Here we go. for a second, more bits here, okay, it probably, uh, you know, it will probably come out nice or more evenly if you, if you didn't jam it in like I'm doing here, but it doesn't matter, you get, you get what I'm trying to do.
Okay, let's stop this and open it up so you can see what it looks like. Okay, so there you go. Oops, I don't need to take, I, I forget that there's a bowl inside a bowl, so I don't actually need to take the whole bowl out, okay? So this is what it looks like. Yeah, it is finer than what it would be in a typical acha, Malaysian style, okay? But, you know, it saves you a bunch of time and it keeps your workspace cleaner as well because you know what it's like when you're chopping up cabbage, you can get it everywhere. Um, so we've got that, all we're going to do... Again, we're going to transfer it into a bowl, okay? And what I'm going to do also, while we're going through all this, is... I'm going to again start boiling some more vinegar in my other Thermomix, okay? My TM5. Okay, so I've got the bowl here, and I'm going to again use a 2 to 1 ratio of white vinegar and water, okay? I'm going to go full aga aga here so I'm not measuring anything. Um, uh, can I get another bottle of vinegar, please? Thank you. Okay, so in this goes. Again, if you've got any questions, um, hit me up. And best bet actually is to, again, sign up at jackiem.com.au slash tm6 and you'll get an automated email that redirects you to my... WhatsApp community where you can ask questions there and I'll, I'll, you know, I'll just pop in and check a couple times a day at least to answer them right away, okay? But of course you can just pop up your question in the, underneath the Facebook comments. Anyway, okay, so, and I'll try and see if I don't miss them. Okay, so here you go, uh, water and vinegar, and we're just going to cover this and cook this, bring it to a boil. So for your comments from Linda Chan, oh yeah, uh, thumbs up and heart <laughs> <laughs> emoji, and Stephanie Pacquiao with hi Jackie. <laughs> Stefan Pacquiao. Oh, oh, sorry, Stefan. <laughs> hi Stefan, how are you? Okay, so we are going to use the grading function this time around. Okay, the grading function means you have. I want to make sure I get this right. Okay. You have the, the light colored stem facing upwards, okay? So here we go. Okay, so let me just go back to this. Um, am I grading? Yes, I am grading, okay? Like I said, this is a, I still have to wrap my head around all the different functions, okay? So slicing, grating, okay, grating, okay. Okay, I want the thick grate now. And I'm going to grate the carrots, okay? to think about this a little bit. Okay, so this is what I get. Um, just a bowl, just a bowl, here you go. Okay, so grated, they look like this, okay? And that's fine for our char, okay? It's a little bit thinner, uh, but it's evenly cut, which is great. So that's going to go in here. I'm keeping it separate because for the next step, when we blanch the vegetables, we're blanching them separately, okay? Only because like, Certain vegetables are tougher and need longer, and others are not so much and just need to really just go in and come out, okay? So we got that. Next thing we're going to do is the cucumber. Okay, make sure I've got this on. Okay, so cucumber, we want to grate it as well. And I haven't tried slicing it, but if we, if we slice the cucumber this way, they'll end up like crescent shape, okay? Which may work for some of you, but usually 
um, when we're doing our child, we will cut them into strips like this, okay, and then sort of stuff, okay. So the shape's going to be different. So between having it in crescent shapes and having it grated, I'm going to go with grated, okay, but it's up to you. Um, but either way, it's not going to look exactly like your achar, but once, you know, once you've actually done it, I think you'll be quite happy with the result, okay? So let's go thick grate, okay? Here we go. And this time, I'm going to chuck it in now, whoops. to uh, core that one. Okay, let's move this over here. Let's see how it turns out. Okay, so this is what it looks like, your grated cucumber, okay? And like I said, it's finer than your average achar. But I'm happy with it. So again, this is going to come out. And we're just going to clean up this area a little bit. I'm going to get Paul's help with this. Okay, I don't need the grating anymore. Don't mind. Okay, can you just, just wash it up for me? That'd be good. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Too late. And don't forget, we've still got the steak beans as well. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm going to give you my cutting board in a sec. That's okay. Okay. So we've got this, we've got the cabbage, we've got lots of cucumber, and we've got the carrots, okay? And we're going to get an achar out of this, okay? Let me just pass this over. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we are going to make we're going to do two things first of all i'm going to okay this is actually boiled so i'm going to turn it off and i'm going to chuck in i'm going to uh, cook up first i'm going to chuck in the carrots and the snake beans and i'm going to chuck in this and i want to chuck in this okay so i'm going to do that in the thermal mix up the back here and I just realized it's missing its lid okay it, it may actually need a little bit more um, uh, water or slash vinegar because there's quite a lot of I, I, I end up with a bit more vegetables than I expected so I'm just going to put a little bit more here Okay, a bit more water. Okay, it's not actually, you know, we're making achar, I don't actually really do two to one. I do like maybe uh, four to one vinegar to water, actually. It's very aga aga because, you know, it's really up to you how, how sour you want your pickles to be and all that as well. Okay, so whoops, let me just reposition this. Okay, so I'm gonna get out of the screen here and what I'm going to do in here is I'm going to make the sambal for the achar, okay? Now, what you won't see me do in this session are roasting the peanuts and crushing them uh, because I, you know, I usually do them in batches Okay, so I've got some crushed peanuts here, roasted and crushed peanuts, and also I've got some roasted sesame seeds. Okay, so these are the sort of stuff, the sesame seeds, the other sort of stuff you can do in your own time. Uh, and keep them, just make sure that you use up the peanuts pretty quickly, otherwise they go stale, or you can keep them in the freezer or fridge or whatever. Okay, so to make the sambal, what we need are garlic, onion, okay, so I've got onion here. Uh, I've got some garlic which I've already minced. Obviously, you know, the thermal mix will mince it for you if you haven't already. 
I need some chili, okay? So I've got uh, some fresh red chili. I'm gonna chuck two of them in here, okay? Okay, I'm gonna chuck in this onion. Okay, if, uh, if I were doing this for my business, I don't use fresh onion because, you know, they're pricey. <laughs> um, and I'm gonna chuck in some garlic, okay? Bit of garlic, quite a bit of garlic. And I'm gonna chuck in some turmeric powder. You can use fresh turmeric, obviously. I don't have I don't have any lying around, but if you did use fresh turmeric, uh, the thermomix will, will will blend it for you as well. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to blend this up. Okay. And to do that, the thermomix, uh, I'm just going to put it on eight point five. Right now. See how it goes. So that's two seconds in the thermomix to blend these things. This is what it looks like. Okay. So we're going to scrape it down. Scrape it down. And I'm going to add oil to this. Let's scrape it down a little bit more. Okay, oil. Put some salt in here. Okay, and we're going to cook it. Okay, so we're going to fry this up in the thermomix. Say. Okay, you know what? I'm going to use this thing, okay, so that the steam doesn't get trapped in there. And I've got a second Thermomix bowl, by the way, in case you're wondering um, whether it's a good idea to have a second bowl. Yes, it absolutely is. Okay, so we're going to cook this up. Okay, you can see the countdown and the speed, everything is very guesstimated sort of thing. Okay, so I've got this here. You see it's steaming. Okay, what I'm going to do, and you can't see it because I don't have room space here, is I'm going to add the vegetables in here, okay? So first I'm going to add the carrots. And the snake beans, okay? I'm going to keep cooking it a little bit. I've just set it on uh, reverse by the way because you don't want it to start, you know. The reverse basically means that the blades are spinning in reverse, okay, so that the dull side of the blade, you know, the non-sharp side, um, is spinning sort of thing. Because that's useful for when you're cooking meat or cooking vegetables in your thermomix um, so that they don't chop things up. Stefan asks, I love Acha. How spicy does it have to be? 
as spicy as you can take it, sir. Eleven. <laughs> Eleven. <laughs> Okay, so it's basically spinning it, right? I'm gonna stop this because you don't actually need to cook these um, much at all. Okay, now I'm gonna chuck the cabbage in. And let it stir again. Stirring it to just make sure the vegetables mix through. And now I'm going to chuck this in. I'm going to turn it off right away, okay? Okay, in the meantime, you can see all the steam coming off of this, right? So this is cooking the uh, sambal that's going into to the, uh, the achar. Okay, now one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add some balachan to this. Balachan is Malaysian shrimp paste. Uh, I'm you, uh, you know, just just from like you know all my shortcuts from my restaurant days. I'm going to use a balachan powder. You don't have to use balachan powder, okay? If you're using like uh, those hardy balachan, you can chuck it in and beat it up, okay? And it will crush it up for you, okay? It's just because back in the day I didn't have a thermomix to do my cooking with. I bought it in powder form, so that's what we're going to use. I'm just going to add the balachan in there now. So for those who want to know, this is what it looks like. It's a serbuk balachan, which in Malay means um, balachan powder, literally, okay? And again, if you can't get a hold of balachan, you can use Thai shrimp paste or whatever, okay? Or Indonesian trasi. They're all basic. For this particular recipe, they all function pretty much the same, okay? So I'll just put a couple of tablespoons in there, or a tablespoon or so, and we're just going to let it keep cooking. Totally forgot about that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So here we go. This comes out, okay. There's a big jug of achar vegetables. Here you go, okay. Let me just see if I can show it on the other camera. Okay, now I'm gonna get Paul to help me strain this in the. Usually you can strain it in here, but there might be a bit too much in here, but it's up to you if you wanna strain it in the Thermomix thinger. Um, if you can strain it in the sink into this and just bring it back, that's okay. There's two comments I'll read when I get back. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay, so everyone following me so far, um, let me know if you've got any questions uh, and I'll try and answer them in uh, the comment section or better still, you know, make sure you catch my lives where I can get to answer all your questions from the previous session and whatever as well. And I might actually, if, there's, if there are enough questions for my sessions, I will do separate videos just to do kind of like a back and forth on this, okay? Now, I mentioned I've already roasted and crushed the peanuts. If you're wondering what sort of peanuts to use, this is what I get, okay? If you're based in Australia, in Sydney in particular, Asian grocery stores should have these labeled blanched peanuts and they don't have the peanut skin on them. And again, this is from my restaurant days. You might think, oh, you know, I prefer them with skin on and whatever, okay? If I was making nasi lemak, I'd buy the... Uh, I buy peanuts with the skin on. If I'm making things like achar and whatever else and peanut sauce, are they sauce and all that, I'm, I get the ones without without the skin on. Okay, so this is what they look. Blanche peanuts, Asian grocery stores here. You should be able to find them easily, okay? Did we need to keep the liquid? Okay, so this is what, no. Okay. This is what it looks like now, okay? And what we're going to do, this is hot, we are going to add sugar to this, okay? And this actually takes a lot of sugar, okay? So don't freak out, but just keep in mind, this is not something that you are going to eat straight, or at least I hope not. 
<laughs> um, so I'm, I'm adding sugar here and mixing it in and it will actually, the, the vinegar will react with it and the vinegar and the heat, you know, will react with it and, and melt it, okay? I had a, I'm still sore about this like 10 years later. <laughs> But I was asked to supply a recipe for a contribute a recipe to a cookbook years ago uh, by a media agency. They put out a cookbook on Malay mini cookbook on Malaysian recipes. Okay, and I actually supplied a recipe for my achar, and this was how I said to make it. Right, you 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 um, uh, you you know you cook the vegetables in the vinegar, you strain them out, and then you add sugar. Okay, so at some point, some whoever the genius recipe developer or editor was, they recruited to edit the recipes before they went into the cookbook, decided without consulting me to change them so that the sugar went into that pot of vinegar. Okay, which makes no sense to me because you're chucking out the vinegar after you boil the vegetables. Okay, so I'm still very annoyed about it because anyone who attempted any of my attempted that acha recipe from that cookbook are going to find that it didn't work, it tasted like, you know, too vinegary and not sweet enough and it's Jackie's fault. So whoever, any of you guys who are in touch with um, recipe editors, especially those who don't have an expertise in Malaysian cooking, uh, tell them that, you know, show a little bit of respect to the, uh, to the uh, authors, okay, and at least, at the very least, ask them, are you sure it's right that you add the sugar after you do everything, okay, instead of taking it into your own hands and think that you're smarter than, you know, than the people actually doing the work, okay, really, really annoys me. <laughs> okay, so that's my little rant for the day. Here you go. This is going to produce some juice, okay? So what we, what I usually did at my restaurant was that I would then strain it out some more, okay? So we are going to do that, and we can do that by hand. Okay, I'm just going to take this out and transfer it. In the meantime, we have a couple. Mm -hmm. We have uh, Bibi Yowong with Hi Jackie. Oh, Bibi Yowong. Hi, uh, Bibi. How are you? Stefan says, I like it spicy, but my wife complains. Great. <laughs> recipe for me. I didn't know about the sesame seeds. It's a great tip. Karima Kasi Banya. Uh, sama Sama. Okay. So, this is like done. Okay. So, I've got the pickled vegetables with sugar. Let's run through it. I was gonna open this up. Now, the other thing about the TM6 that I keep having to uh, adapt to is that it's got a safety mechanism built in so that when it's cooking something at high temperature and you stop it, it doesn't automatically immediately open up for you, okay? Because it wants to cool down a little bit, so you have a countdown of like in the 12 seconds or something like that, okay? So this is what this looks like. This is the sambal for the acha, okay? And we're going to pour this in here. So let's do that. I'm going to use my scraper. Okay, let me just move the Thermomix out of the way so you can see what's happening in the overhead. Okay, so that's what it looks like. And this is the sambal that was cooked in the Thermomix. Okay, and you're just going to scrape this in. Pass it through. Okay, look at how it's coming along. Add the peanuts. It always takes a bit more peanuts than you would expect. Yeah, that's very true. <laughs> and sesame seeds. Here you go. 
That's your acha, okay, Malaysian acha. Like I said, using the Thermomix cutter saves you a lot of time. The vegetables are a bit finer. But I think it's fantastic. Okay, how easy is that? All right, if you've got any questions, hit me up, like I said, and I'll try and answer them uh, as quickly as, and as efficiently as possible. Don't forget to sign up at jackiem.com.au slash tm6. That will take you to my sign-up page to be on my email list where I will send you any recipes, uh, Thermomix related, and also other recipes as well because, you know, I'm sure you'd be interested to get more Malaysian recipes from yours truly. And there you go. Thank you very much for joining me. I hope to be able to do another cooking demo um, later on this week. We'll see how we go for time. Um, and I want to actually be able to show you guys. Uh, obviously, I'll be cooking something and teaching you something. But I want to be able to incorporate um, uh, how the differences between the TM5 and the TM6 for those of you who actually own a TM5 and, you know, don't know the differences sort of thing, right? Okay?